We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing all right, Jared. We are doing all right. How are you? Uh, you know, Kyle, we have we have a bonus game today. We have a bonus game today. So typically, here's what we do. We typically do uh, one game on the Know Your Enemy. We'll pick the Ohio State game against the spread. Then we come onto this show and we pick six additional games via the spread. However, uh, Ohio State Youngstown State is expected to be a bloodbath to the point where you can't bet on that game. So that means bonus game in the sloop picks. We're picking seven games, Kyle. We're picking seven games in the sloop picks. All right. Well, let's not waste any more time because we got to get through an extra game here. So let's. That's okay. We don't have a guest picker, so that'll that'll help. (laughs) All right. (laughs) All right. We are going to start off, Jared. In ACC country, uh, Notre Dame and NC State. Uh, noon kickoff on ABC, and the Fighting Irish is only a seven and a half point victory in this, or seven and a half point <laughs> favorite. Yeah, in this game, uh, I got it right that time. All right, who's going first? Uh, I'll let you go first because I'm such a nice guy. Yeah, that's at least half true. Um, I don't know what that means either. The, <laughs> I'm going to, Notre Dame's been blowing people out and like NC state's probably the best team that they've played so far, but like they've just been blowing teams out. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with Notre Dame to win and cover the seven and a half point spread. You know, anytime we talk about NC State, you, you got to play that gift, Jared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to yeah. play that gift. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> For those that just listening, it's the one where uh, NC State beat Florida State a um, few years ago, and it's just a this big old guy holding onto a pole with his shirt off and just wailing his shirt like a helicopter, around. which is a thing they <laughs> and do then, in and North then, Carolina. And then there's like a, an event. Who remembers that event, song? And then there's an event security guy that's just like, yeah, come on, like ha- giving oh, half effort. Oh, come on, <laughs> like come on, come on, get down, come on. <laughs> um, uh, by yeah, the way, I no, deducted. This, this get- I deducted a point. Uh, Zach gets my reference. I deducted a point from NC State for having a sailor hat logo. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. This won't be a close game. Sorry, Wolfpack fans. Uh, I got Notre Dame to cover as well. All right, next game, also at noon uh, on ESPN. This one is going to be the original U, the original U, meaning Utah Utes, taking on Baylor, where Utah is a seven and a half point favorite. Now, unless I'm missing something about Baylor and why this spread is just seven and a half points, I don't know. Maybe I'm. Maybe I'm walking into something I shouldn't, that I don't know, but I know Baylor lost to Texas State uh, last weekend. Yeah. And Utah beat Florida, which is a power five team. You can say that maybe Florida's not good this year. Okay, but But Baylor lost to Texas Texas State. State. (laughs) So, yeah, I'm going to pick Utah here. This feels like such a trap, right? Yeah, yeah. Utah minus seven and a half against Baylor. It feels too good to be true. It feels like a trap. And if it's a trap, I'm walking mm-hmm. into it. Uh, Lord help me. Yes. All right. Uh, the third game in our triple uh, header at noon on Fox. Nebraska and Coach Prime. And I mean Colorado. Yeah. Um, Colorado. Colorado is a three and a half point victory. Now. You did it again. Oh, Jared. Uh, they're a three and a half point favorite. Yes, three and a half point favorite. Did I say victory? You sure did. <laughs> All right. Well, it's going to be more than three and a half points, Jared. <laughs> Are we buying into the hype? I mean, I guess. I mean, I, we meant I, I. We talked about this in uh, our weekends epi- our weekends episode here about Colorado, and I, I really think. They're only Colorado is really only as good as how well Travis Hunter will do in here. And if he 
has a great game again, like he did against uh, TCU last weekend, yeah, Colorado is going to win this game here. But I just saw the stat here uh, right before we hit record, Jared. Travis Hunter in week one played 145 snaps in that game, which, which uh, in comparison, if you look uh, in five years ago, remember that seven overtime game between LSU and Texas A&M? I'm taking this from 24-7 sports here. Look how many snaps in a seven overtime game that these players played. And 13, still doesn't even come. 13, 96, 90, or 82. Not even close <laughs> to the number of uh, snaps Travis Hunter uh, had in week one. And by the way, their they're snaps at wide receiver and corner where you're not, like you're running a lot. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. no disrespect to, uh, like Kellen Mund or Joe Burrow who are in that graphic. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't feel like it's the same thing being a quarterback as being, you know, Agreed. I, I, I hope they don't kill him. Like, I hope they don't destroy his legs. Um, or that he's just going to be tired a third of the way into the season. Well, that's what that's what I mean by kill his legs. Um, okay. Yeah, but I'm not I'm not fully buying in on Colorado. Um, I'm you know I'm still going with the if you want to crown their ass then crown their ass, but I'm not I'm not ready to crown their ass. Uh, that being said, I'm not really impressed by Nebraska at this point. If this had been like seven and a half, I may have picked Nebraska because we all know Nebraska never uh, loses by more than a score. But at three and a half, I'll, I'll, I'll take Colorado. All right. That next game here, Texas A&M and uh, the fake you, uh, Miami of Florida. Not Miami of Ohio, but Miami of Florida. <laughs> Texas A&M is a four and a half point victory. Kyle. So there I go again. Four, I know, four and a half what? points. You have literally <laughs> never done that once in the history of the Sloopcast. What I know. What 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 is the baby keep, is the baby I'm... teething? Yes, yes. He are, is. are you not getting sleep? <laughs> is this what's happening? No, I'm I'm, I'm getting some sleep. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. Are four, you four and a half four and a half point favorite? I'm gonna have to pause and think before I say now. Four and a half point favorite is Texas A and M. Yeah, uh, I. Still don't buy in on Miami if there was ever any uh, to begin with here, but man, that's that that's that's a tough spread. I'm not a fan of either of these teams. I know bingo. that <laughs> Bingo Jared says. I know that who did Miami play? Yeah, Miami played Miami last week, yep. and Texas A and M played New Mexico last week. You know, you know, I'll, I'll I'll actually take Miami to cover, but I think Texas A and M will will win here. I I just yeah, I just don't yeah, I don't and like then, either team. So I have two when in doubts. I have right. one in doubt, pick the quarterback, but I also have a second one in doubt. Do you remember what the second one in doubt is? Uh, never picked Miami. <laughs> Oddly enough, no. Uh, when in doubt, pick the underdog. So give me the underdog. Give me Miami. All right. I, I do agree. I think Texas A&M wins, but four and a half points is enough to get me to flip to the Hurricanes. Yeah. All right. The battle of, of Iowa is this weekend here, Jared. Iowa and Iowa State, where the Hawkeyes are a three and a half favorite. <laughs> Three and a half what favorite, Kyle? <laughs> uh yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Iowa State on this one. I do think Iowa wins, but I always have a hard time picking Iowa when they're giving up points because Iowa doesn't score that many points to be giving up. Um so I'm always no, very, but, but, very hesitant did act, to Did they actually get their quarterback? Did they no. finally get their quarterback? No. 
No. No. But but, but he he but he threw for two who's, touchdowns. Who's, Jared, who's their coordinator? But Jared, they, who's their he offensive threw for coordinator? Two touchdowns. He threw for two touchdowns though, Jared. Okay. I. I, ne- I, I almost never pick Iowa as a as a favorite. Again, they don't score enough points to be giving up points. I think they win, but with three and a half points, I'm going to take Iowa State. And this is like legitimately one of those rivalries where crazy stuff happens all the time. Um, so an Iowa State victory, as improbable as it seems, I don't think is super improbable. So um, give me Iowa State. Yeah, this this game tends to be pretty close, and, and three and a half, three and a half is really close. Like it's more than a field not goal. Quite a, not quite a pick 'em here. Nah. Not quite. But three, that's that's that, that's a full field goal, Kyle. It is a full field goal, and last last year was a was such a great game. You remember what the score is last year with Iowa and Iowa State. No, what, no whatever, not. whatever you think, whatever you think the score is, go lower. <laughs> Fair. It was a ten to seven game. See, that's year. what I'm saying. Don't you can't let Iowa <laughs> give up points. How would I say? You give up three and a half points there. Guess what? They lost. <laughs> yeah. Never. 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 Never take Iowa giving up points. Yeah. Do we see an Iowa touchdown? By which I mean, you mean the like offense? A, you mean the offense? No, he mean he he means the proper noun. He doesn't mean proper noun Iowa noun touchdown. He means the proper noun Iowa touchdown, i.e., a non-offensive touchdown. You know, I'll pick the Cyclones here. Pick the Cyclones to cover. I agree. All right, uh, next up here, 6.30 on the CW. Oh, God. How are you Who's on this? Who's watching this one, Jared? Who's watching this game? Are we watching this game, Jared? <laughs> it's, I mean, it's eligible for the, the CW, really. Who, who, who did this? Why, why are we on the old UPN? What what happened? Who's old enough to remember UPN? Good lord! Uh, I didn't even think they TV? had games on the on the on the CW. They do. Well, I mean, obviously. Um, <laughs> yeah, obviously. <laughs> it's just Goodness. it wasn't it wasn't um, it wasn't anyone's first pick. All right, Kyle, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati is dogged by seven and a half, meaning Pittsburgh is favored by seven and a half. Uh, this is this is not appear so far to be Luke Fickle's Bearcats. Who do you have on this one? Uh, that reason there. Yeah, I, I think I think Pittsburgh will cover here. It's it's not it's I don't think it's going to be the same. Uh, Cincinnati team that we've seen in previous years. Yes, they they looked great against East K- East Kentucky last week, where uh, Emory Jones, everyone knows Emory Jones, right? Where mm-hmm. he he had seven touchdowns in that game. He threw through five. He threw more touchdowns. He did incompletions uh, last weekend, and then ran for two more in the victory there. But yeah. I'll, I'll get I'll get Pittsburgh to cover. Emory Jones is still in college. It so is Michael Penix and a lot of other people who, you know, COVID. Um, yeah, I'm. I I do think. And honestly, I think he has one more year because of COVID. My my, uh, I do think I do think Pittsburgh wins this game. Um, you know, Luke Fickle is not walking through that door for Cincinnati, but Kenny Pickett's also not walking through that door for Pittsburgh. Uh, I, I, I do like Cincinnati to cover seven and a half points, but I don't think they win Pittsburgh to win Cincinnati to cover for me. Okay. How many many differences we have so far, Kyle? 
I'm not paying attention. Fair <laughs> enough. Um, that might be our first one, actually. <laughs> did you pick Iowa State? I did. You picked uh, uh, you picked Colorado. Did you pick Texas A&M or Miami? Uh, I went Miami just because they were the dogs. All right. Yep. That's our first uh, difference then. Okay. All right. All right. And the last game here, our bonus game. Well, probably the Cincinnati Pittsburgh might have been the bonus game, but either way, uh, <laughs> Texas. Kyle? Texas. No, <laughs> actually. Was it Iowa and Iowa State? Uh, it was Utah and Baylor. I like to try and spread them out okay. across the time zones as much as I can. Not time Fair zones, enough. time windows. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. All right. Last one here. Texas, Alabama, part two. Six or uh, 7 p.m. And I'm just looking because I never trust with Alabama being, um, playing a top opponent that it's actually a home and home i'm going to double check i'm pretty sure it is in uh it is in um it is at alabama here because they did play at texas last year so yep Al at alabama 7 p.m espn where alabama is a seven and a half point favorite do they do they play again next year and is it a non-conference next year I would have to look that up. You would have to, because Texas will be in the conference next year, but it wouldn't be the first time we saw a non-conference conference game because of conference realignment. Uh, no, they do not play next year. Interesting. Alabama does play Oklahoma next year. But that's a conference game. Wow. The Alabama schedule next year towards the end of the year. Hey. Wow, they Cal. This they, is this is a hell of a tangent you're about to go down. It, it it is. It is, but I'm actually shocked. Next year Alabama ends their season with four away games to end the season. At LSU, at Oklahoma, at Tennessee, and then at Vanderbilt. Oh no, I'm sure there's probably a non, a yeah, there's, FCS school, FCS school somewhere between there. Yeah, there's there's no way, unless they're giving up that oh, premium. Oh, oh. It just says TBA, so there's no, there's no, um, there's no date there for that. Oh, there it is, Mercer. They play Mercer. There he, we go. He got there. <laughs> I got Mercer once. We don't got to talk about that, though. Uh, I still don't trust... Get back here. Uh, <laughs> I still don't trust Texas. Is Texas back? No. They'll never be back until they actually... Until they actually beat a, a really good team here. And will they win, will they win this game? Nah. They, they couldn't last year at at their home place. And they think they can win on the road in Alabama. No, not happening. Uh, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't wear flip flops in the showers, y you risk getting Mercer. Uh, this is just a public service announcement for everyone uh, from from the Sloopcast. Uh, I I like I like Texas enough here that I'm I I think seven and a half points is a lot. I think it's a lot. Uh, so I'm gonna take Texas. I I. I I th I think that Texas has like a 45% chance of winning this game. Uh 75, but you're giving excuse me, not 75, 7.5 points. I'll take that. I'll take that. Yeah, I d I didn't get to finish mine. I I had Texas covering, but I still oh. like Alabama to win. My bad. <laughs> so we agree on that one too. We do. The only difference is the game that's playing on the CW, Jared. <laughs> how, how is our only difference, Pittsburgh and Cincinnati? O honestly, maybe even the only reason this is included in the slow picks is, is it, because it, I thought I was picking NFL games it, for a minute. The, yeah, the Bengals and the Steelers, yeah. 
Uh, what, what is the? Uh, I would actually <laughs> love nothing more that at the end of this conference reshuffling, that we could get Cincinnati and Pittsburgh and West Virginia all in the same conference. That's assuming West Virginia is still a, a university and hasn't gone completely belly up. Because I don't know if anyone's been following the stories in West Virginia. Uh, former Ohio State president Gordon Gee has apparently uh, spent all of their money and then some. Um, don't know if anyone's following that story. Gordon Gee uh, watched watched um, Field of Dreams one too many times. I think he thought if he just kept making West Virginia, as in the University of West Virginia, bigger, that more students would just come. And that hasn't worked out. Uh, and now they uh, are out of money and he's talking about just, you know, canceling literature and a bunch of other like 32 programs, Kyle. They're just going to cut like 32 programs from WVU because Gordon Gee just kept building shit. So now he's going to have all these buildings and no classes to put them in or to put in them rather. I say got out from underneath that bus. So, yeah. So the Alabama, Texas game over under 54 and a half points. Hmm. So what's the predictive score there? 54 and a half minus seven and a half would be what? 43. Don't make me do. No. Don't, don't make me do math live on the podcast. Not 43. I, I didn't. It you, just, you took it upon yourself to do that. Not 43. It was 3 minus, so 47. What What? What was it again? <laughs> Don't make me do... I can't do I can't do it on the podcast. There's too much pressure. With the camera and the microphones, you said it was a 54 over under? 54 and a half. Okay. 54 minus 7 would be 47. I'm going to bump that up for the sake of easy math to make that 48 because that, no, that doesn't work. Never mind. Listen, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to do podcast math live. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. Do, 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 do you need help, Jared? Yes. That, that's a 31 to 24 score. 31-24 is the predictive Vegas score and, on that. And you remember what the score was last year? I do not. 20-19. to 19. So are you recommending taking the under? Yes, I am. I think Texas will be a better team this year, and I don't know if I'm going to say the same thing about Bama. And I also think Texas wins that game if Quinn Ewers doesn't get hurt. Mm. These are things yeah. I... These are things I know. These are the things I know. I know. These are the things I know. Yeah. All right, Kyle, that's, that's it. Um, I, I feel like we got really intimidated by the fact that we had seven games. So we tried to hurry and maybe ended up undershooting a bit, but that's okay. Um, I want to encourage everyone to check out our t-shirt stores. We actually have five brand new designs in the t-shirt store. Uh, you can find those by going to merch.thesloopcast.com. Come join our discord server. We have a bot that that lets us pretend gamble and everyone's having a lot of fun with it. You come to this, you come to the discord server, everyone sort of chats, uh, you earn sloop coins. That's what we've decided to call them. Um, in, in the discord by just being active in the discord, you earn these coins and then you have these coins and then you can gamble these coins, uh, to the bet right back to the sloop bot. And, uh, it's fun. Because sometimes we put, like, sometimes we'll just be like, okay, who's going to win, Iowa or Iowa State? But then sometimes we'll do, uh, Kyle put uh, turnover uh, over under for the Duke-Clemson game. I told him, I told him, I said, hey, Kyle, pick a pick an over under for Duke-Clemson. Uh, and, and don't do not do winner because it's, it's, cause obviously Duke's not going to win. So um, <laughs> go ahead and just do something goofy. Uh, we'll and end up I'm putting so, a couple and, and of I, Austin's over-unders into the bot so people can go and bet on those. It's a lot of fun. And I was silly enough to only put the over-under on turnovers at two and a half. 
for that you, game. Did you look it up or <laughs> did you just pick it? I just I just picked it. Oh, okay, I, I'm sure I'm sure you could have found that wager out there somewhere had you looked hard enough. But screw it. Uh, that's it, Kyle. Do you have anything in Kyle's corner? Um, couple of things real quick. Uh, well, first off, uh, C.J. Stroud. Who? A, a C.J. Stroud, the guy who was rookie. immediately good for Ohio State, is a, he was a fully fledged quarterback for Ohio State immediately. Per everyone in the comment section, he yeah, was a f- he was a fully fledged day one greatness. C.J. Day one greatness, Stroud. Thanks, Spikes. As a rookie here already, the captain for the Houston Texans. That's because he's a quarterback. Let's just be honest. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but, wasn't but the main thing, main thing I wanted, I wanted your instant reaction here, Jared. What do you think sure. about? We're talking about everyone's favorite Big Ten team here. What do you think about these jerseys from Rutgers? Didn't they wear this last year? I maybe, maybe. I, I I don't like. Is this is this the actual thing they put out, or did someone snag this from a video? Nope. This is from this is from Rutgers. Okay. First off, I like the uniform. I'm not I'm not saying otherwise, but just from a graphic design standpoint, I hate this as a post. Are any of these better? No, the other ones are not. The other ones are not. Here, I'll, I'll take one more. Because here, here's I'll, what I'll I would have liked. Because it's just very dark gray. Like it's just not. It's not good. It's not good Photoshop work. Because I, either make the thing black, and I. I'm just. I'm just nerding out about Photoshop. Shot. Photoshop. Shit, Kyle. It's time to end the show. I'm just saying, uh, like, if you'd if you'd cut the player out, you kept the back behind him, you could have made it super dark. Yeah, nerd alert. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm earning this one. But I'm just saying, if you if you color adjusted the background differently than the player, you could have simultaneously made the player pop out a bit more, but also still have him fade into the background, but do so in a way in which the colors are actually black and not this super dark gray. Call me a nerd all you want. I just, this is bad. This is bad after effects. Jared's, Jared's just wasting time to get to that 30 minute mark. <laughs> we don't need to get to the 30 minute mark. It's fine. Heartless <laughs> bastards are ending the show. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer. Uh, listen to local music for sports local podcasters once again uh, we're uh, finishing at 2830 Kyle thank you very much uh, once again these are the heartless bastards <laughs>